Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about Tecna signatures. The signs of extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere out there. But what we're talking about is actually a very recent paper that was released not so long ago that tries to identify this very specific Tecna signature we can use to try to find aliens somewhere out there that here on planet Earth is actually something that we currently are trying to eliminate. We're going to be talking about pollution. In this case, the type of pollution that's present everywhere on planet Earth. Now, first of all, unlike some of the articles in the press that make you believe, NASA is actually extremely interested in discovering some sort of an alien life somewhere out there. As a matter of fact, a couple of years ago they held a really big workshop essentially identifying all of the potential techno signatures we can look for, how to look for them, and even provided very specific detail on what exactly we can look for, how we can find it, and what sort of difficulties we can expect by looking at certain regions or by looking at certain particular things. And obviously also identified several difficulties and several biases that we can have when we can accidentally claim something is extraterrestrial intelligence, but in reality it's something that's not. The most famous example right now being Oumuamua, the extrasolar comet that visited inner solar system three or four years ago. But when it comes to trying to find different techno signatures and or basically trying to identify if there's really any other extraterrestrial intelligence out there, there's one specific thing that we know for a fact can lead to the discovery of alien life and potentially also extraterrestrial intelligence. The various chemical detections emanating from a certain planet or a certain object somewhere out there. Now we've already discussed the so-called phosphine that was potentially discovered on Venus just roughly about a year ago. But even this particular discovery has already generated a lot of buzz and also a lot of contradictory theories. We still don't really know if phosphine was discovered on Venus, but phosphine, for example, is an extremely important gas that we know can only really be produced by either life or in some extremely, extremely complex environments. But phosphine does not guarantee any kind of intelligence though. So it's a great way for us to possibly discover alien life, but it's not a really good way for us to discover a potentially intelligent life. As a matter of fact, phosphine is toxic to us. So if there is intelligence or if there is intelligent life present on a certain planet, it's probably going to try to get rid of phosphine. There are, however, other gases we can look for. And in this case, there are two specific types of gases that we know for a fact, at least based on what we have here on planet Earth, can hypothetically be the sign of intelligent life somewhere out there. And both of these gases are to some extent the result of pollution on the planet. One of these gases, or actually one type of these gases, are the so-called CFCs, or chlorofluorocarbons. There's actually a few of them, as you can see in this particular list. And a few decades ago, these gases were responsible for almost causing our planet to lose the ozone layer, responsible for protecting us from the dangerous ultraviolet radiation. Luckily, a lot of governments around the world were able to combine their power and signed what's known as the Montreal Protocol that essentially banned the use of CFCs and over the next few decades, the situation has improved dramatically. Although very recently there was a paper that suggested that certain regions, specifically China, I'm looking at you, still has certain emissions coming from certain regions. But that's definitely not enough for us to worry about yet, especially because a lot of these emissions were illegal and the government was not aware of them, and China has already promised to kind of fix this problem. But one thing about CFCs is that they're not produced naturally, they're only produced artificially. And because of this, we know that if we ever discover any CFCs emanating from a planet somewhere out there, there is something going on there for sure. At the same time, CFCs are also an extremely potent greenhouse gases, and could hypothetically be used by a species somewhere out there to terraform a planet. This is something that's already been proposed to, for example, terraform Mars as well. Although that's not something we can easily do just yet. But anyway, even though CFCs have already been investigated by NASA several times, there is another gas that's even more common that has recently been investigated in a paper you can find in the description below. Nitrogen dioxide. The gas produced in combustion. And that's actually what the scientists in this paper wanted to focus on. Specifically, they wanted to identify what exactly we should be looking for in these atmospheres of other planets if, for example, we discover that there is nitrogen dioxide there. Now, unlike the CFCs, nitrogen dioxide can actually be produced naturally through various geological means. But it's not really produced to the point where we can easily see it usually. And we normally know exactly how much nitrogen dioxide to expect on a certain planet like Venus, for example. But let's just say that we're looking at a distant star and then as the planet passes in front of it, 
right at this point where the solar light passes through the atmosphere, we start getting certain different emissions suggesting that there is a lot of nitrogen dioxide in the atmosphere of this planet. Way more than the models predict. In this case, the only sort of reasonable explanation here is that it cannot be chemical, it has to be produced by an industry. This is the only gas we know, at least from our example, that happens to be an industrial gas. It's not a gas that's produced by life. It's also not a gas that's produced in really large amounts on planets. So large amounts of NO2, like here on planet Earth, definitely indicate some sort of industrial civilization living there. And although things like lightning or even things like powerful volcanic eruptions can also produce some of this gas as well, in reality, 80% of all the NO2 on the planet Earth currently is produced by humans. And it is a pretty bad gas, it's actually quite toxic, but nevertheless it still happens because we currently depend on various industries that unfortunately produce a lot of this gas. And what's more unusual is that in the lower regions of the atmosphere, about 10 to maybe 15 kilometers above the ground, nitrogen dioxide happens to be an extremely easily to see gas here. There is so much of it now that has accumulated over the years that if, for example, some other species were trying to discover if Earth is habitable, it would be very obvious. And because of this, we know that if we look at other planets and find this in their atmosphere, it's very likely that it was also possibly from the same types of origin. It is very unlikely for nitrogen dioxide to be accumulated in the upper atmosphere for long periods of time, which is pretty much exactly what the scientists in this paper argue. With the main purpose of the study being an ability to detect the NO2 signal and seeing if it actually represents some sort of a potential signal we can use to detect extraterrestrial intelligence. And long story short, the answer is yes, it can definitely be used as a technical signature. One of the more important discoveries from this paper is that, well, apparently, if there is some sort of a civilization living within about 30 light year radius away from planet Earth, which by the way includes roughly around 500 or so star systems, and also possibly about 100 or so Earth-like planets. After about 400 hours of observation, we should be able to collect enough data on the atmosphere of this particular planet to know exactly if there is some sort of a combustion going on and if there is any NO2. And this is actually using modern technology, modern telescopes. So in other words, we don't really need any new telescopes to determine all of this. Moreover, certain stars, especially the ones that are colder than the Sun, such as the K-type stars or the red dwarfs, will actually produce much better signals allowing us to definitively identify if there is any extraterrestrial intelligence. And also since most of these stars do not produce enough ultraviolet radiation, they will also prevent the NO2 from breaking apart and it will probably accumulate more NO2 in the atmospheres, which will then also increase our chance of finding something in some of these nearby star systems and nearby planets. But this study is obviously not perfect and there are still a few problems that the scientists mention in the paper. For example, certain types of clouds or even certain types of aerosols can potentially represent very similar wavelengths to NO2. In other words, they can kind of fool us into thinking that we're seeing nitrogen dioxide, but in reality it's something completely different. At the same time, for us to detect these signals, it would kind of mean that these civilizations would have to produce NO2 for an extremely long time. I mean, when you think about it, here on planet Earth, We've only been producing NO2 for the past 100 years or so. This value represents 0.0000002% of the total age of our planet. And this of course implies that statistically speaking, the chance of us detecting something in the vicinity within about 30 light years away from us is currently extremely low, like super super low. So we shouldn't really keep our hopes up, but doing these studies allows us to definitely find ways of how we can find various techno signatures coming from other planets, and most importantly, it identifies factors preventing different types of biases and preventing very rash decisions of saying, hey, it's aliens, when in reality it was just pollution from something entirely different. So trying to eliminate these biases and trying to eliminate possible mistakes, and also doing all of these simulations in helping us identify what we should be looking for, can definitely one day help us discover some sort of a alien civilization somewhere out there. But we also have to always remember Carl Sagan's wisdom. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. On that note, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. And either way, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.